Hi, welcome to Mojo Monday. Hi, excuse the garbage truck out front. Um, I'm trying different things. Um, today I'm trying to be close to the internet connection. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a different problem, but hold on one moment while I stream this live into the Wild Healers group. Just take me a moment. I'm still here. Um... Okay. Okay. Yay! All right. Hello, hello. Welcome to Mojo Monday. Five strategies to step into leadership. I'm super excited for this one because I I believe that these times that we are in right now um, are waking us up. The advantage to all the bullshit that's going on right now is um, a lot of us are getting woken up and being called to step it up. Hi Liz, I'm glad you're here with me. So, yeah, so a lot of us are being called to step it up. Liz, you are one of the people being called, it seems to me. Um, it's so cool, it pops up, you're doing a tree pose. Um, anyways, um, So I'm excited to be offering these strategies. Hi Susie, hi Nana Sue. Um, for those of us who are being called, like especially I think women, uh, I think patriarchy is on the way out. I think in my daughter's lifetime, it's going to have shifted um, in many places, definitely our country and I think healers are also being called because human healing is connected to earth healing, earth protectors. We're all being called and we can shift this culture, we can shift this paradigm. We are in a position to make great change in the world and it's scary. It's scary to step into leadership. There's a lot of stuff in the way and I'm going to be addressing much of that today. Again, sorry about the garbage trucks garbage day here on 10th Street um, you have to do your work around being an authority figure I don't know about you but I have I had I guess have <laughs> still a lot of shit around that being an authority figure um, a lot of work around stepping into a, a lot of responsibility um, work around people projecting stuff onto you both good and bad and how to not absorb that and personalize that because if you can hold it neutrally you can make a lot of change for people um, and then visibility any stuff you have around like fully stepping into the spotlight um, all of that I mean that's just the tip of the iceberg of stuff that might be in the way for you to step into leadership um, so I want you to write down now um, those of you who are here now and even if you're watching hey Kara's here hi Kara um, those of you who are watching after the call, go ahead and type it in as well so we can just have a stream of, you know, fellow brothers and sisters writing in what's the first thing off the top of your head that is in your way of stepping into leadership. So go ahead and write that now so we can see how we're not alone with all the stuff that comes up. Yeah. I really want, sorry, there's a phone coming in, phone call coming in. Um, I really want to help you clear the stuff that is in your way because we need you. We need you. I mean, think about if all the people that you would like to be leaders stepped into leadership, what a difference that would make. So, all right. 
Kara says confidence. Yeah, that that's probably number one with the people I talk with. Confidence is probably number one. Um, and somebody, Liz, says visibility. Um, yeah, that's a big one, too. Yeah, it's just on going. I've talked a lot about how hard it is for me to get on and do these Mojo Mondays. Um, yeah, so yeah, visibility and confidence, those are two huge ones. And the confidence, it just comes as you go. It's, it's not like you just get it and then you just have it and then you start. You, you get it as you go. You take a step and then you get more confident and you get less freaked out about the visibility and then you take another step. So let's go ahead and dive in. I'm hoping by the end of the day you'll be leaving with some motivation and some inspiration um, to really feel like you can start taking these steps to get deeper and deeper into being a leader however you're called to to do that so I'm gonna start in with the five strategies um, all right number one god how many garbage trucks are there Jesus <laughs> number one hi Terrence welcome aboard number one um, this is one of my favorites is let the calling be both personal and spiritual so I'll say a little bit more about that um, so I'll tell you a little bit about my own blend of those two things to give you an example of what I'm talking about so I believe there's a spiritual calling and probably all of you who are watching this today have sensed some form of that um, even if you're not spiritual I imagine you know there's this nudging that gets more and more insistent if you ignore it so for me it started on my 38th birthday we were out uh, in Cache Creek at night um, boulder hopping on these hot rocks down by the creek and I took a leap and all of a sudden there was this and it was a rattlesnake and that year was the year of snakes I think I saw at least four other rattlesnakes that year um, and a bunch of other snakes as well and that's when I first started rattling um, I think I had a friend's baby shower was the first time and it was so nerve-wracking where I I really felt called I felt called to create ritual um, to create more meaningful rituals and I was being called to do that um, so that's sort of the spiritual side and that that was the beginning of moving towards Launching Wild and Rising, but you know many years leading into that getting comfortable just just like I let a ritual for my aunt my mom and my grandmother and that was nerve-wracking <laughs> But powerful, you know, so I felt I felt the power and just over and over again these little tiny rituals So that's the spiritual side of it and I'll talk a little bit about the personal side of it is It's okay and even necessary to have there be a a personal driver to leadership and it's it's there, there's a, a temptation to ignore it to have it just be about you know the cause and you know helping other people but let's be real it's a lot of work and I think it's it's definitely fulfilling to be seeing the change that you're making hi Rebecca um, but on the hardest days it's not enough so I think many of us who are willing to step into the spotlight and step into leadership also have perhaps it could be an old wound um, in fact I would say probably there's some wound in there um, and that's an okay thing um, so for me my my understanding of my driver is um, my mom who's super supportive. She's she's wonderful, great role model, everything. But you know, due to her own wounding um, and just her own setup, she's a lot more practical than me. She was always kind of skeptical of how I don't know how to put the word on it, but more creative and spiritual I am, and um, I used to be a lot less practical. So there was always there's been always this need to prove. To her 
that I can be all of that, that I can be successful and grounded and practical while also being pretty wild. Um, so that, that's a personal driver for me. And it's this, it's this wound that doesn't ever completely heal. Like it's always hungering for this validation that I can do that. I can blend those things. Um, and so that's like the exact recipe that kind of fuels me to keep doing this work that I'm doing. And, you know, it's a little broken in a way and, and that's okay. And it's so much better to be aware of it. so that you can keep a check on it. Um, especially as you step into more and more power um, than to kind of just be like, no, it's all selfless. So um, I would love to hear from you about what your personal driver is if you know it. Um, and I also understand it might be broader than the scope of what we're talking about here. So. I could talk more about that um, in my Wild Healers Rising Immersion program we're going to do this exercise where we identify our personal um, invisible drivers um, maybe someday I'll share that share that exercise with you it's it's super enlightening and um, a little bit scary <laughs> to find out the thing that you're you've been trying to hide hide from yourself um, yeah. All right. I think I, I don't want to overshare. <laughs> so that's enough personal sharing for now. Um, number two, I'm going to describe it as walk the walk the walk and talk the talk. So this is um, basically figuring out like what what do you stand for? What's the movement that you want to lead, and then embody that. Make make your life be about that make make your the way you live be an advertisement for a better way of living whatever that means to you maybe it means a better relationship with nutrition in your body maybe it for me it means you know calling women into their power and people out into the wilderness and bringing meaningful ritual into our lives and so Figure out what that is and just promote the hell out of it. And we live in these times that are super exciting. Like people talk shit about social media all the time, but look at what we're doing right now. Like this time right now, anybody who wants to can grab a megaphone and reach hundreds, thousands of people. You can hop on Facebook Live. You can gather an email list and you have a great idea you want to share. You just spend five minutes on MailChimp and it goes out to, um, you know, 600 people, 200 people, um, many of whom will actually read it. <laughs> on Instagram, you can post inspiring pictures. Um, my friend Julie and I were at this um, women's leadership conference a few months ago in the spring and there was this point where we turned to each other in this kind of just giddy excitement and we said we get to choose the Kool-Aid which is a little bit messed up of an example because <laughs> you know we're not like trying to kill people but you know the whole idea of like you know how to win friends and influence people and um, hold on I'm getting a little bit into point three here that's okay it's not slimy if you don't make it slimy right like you get to make the kool-aid whatever you want to make the kool-aid and you get to entice people into it um so maybe your kool-aid is yeah helping people have a better relationship to the planet or their bodies or um yeah i'm getting a little distracted because i think that's more point three no, I'm still on point two. Okay, good. So you get to be a change maker. You get to inspire people. Um, for example, one of the things I do is the mermaid challenge, which is going on right now where, um, you know, I post pictures every time I jump into a lake or a river or an ocean and, and um, try to entice people out into wild spaces and get into bodies of water because 
Gary Snyder says people will protect what they love. And the thing I'm most passionate about is protecting wild spaces and getting people into wild spaces. Um, so something as little as that can, can, can make a difference. So you get to decide, how do you want to inspire people? What's the movement that you want to lead? Um, and again, you're going to have to work on overcoming any obstacles you have to visibility. Um, a lot of people get kind of squirmy around, you know, blasting a bunch of emails out or sending out stuff on social media. And you just have to trust that some people are going to listen and some people are going to tune you out. And the people who, who want the medicine that you're offering are going to tune in. Um, so that's number two. Number three, this one I really love talking about. Those of you who came to my workshop on Saturday, I spoke a lot about this. Um, number three is, excuse me, get really good at enrollment conversations. Now, what is an enrollment conversation? Um, on the business side of things, those of you who are my healer entrepreneurs listening you know that's the conversation where you're getting somebody to commit to your transformational program so that you're getting someone to commit to their vision of what's possible for them um, and it involves a financial transaction but an enrollment conversation can be anything an enrollment conversation can be convincing a group of friends who have never gone backpacking before to go backpacking with you and you know that it's gonna change their lives forever. And you get them to say yes to this thing that's like way outside their comfort zones. Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech is an enrollment conversation where he's enrolling thousands and thousands of people in this vision of what he saw as possible, enticing them to see the world in a different way, to see people in a different way. So this is probably one of the key hearts at, of being a leader. Um, and people give sales a bad name. Um, and I think it's because these are powerful skills and it's up to you to use them in integrity. You can get these skills of being influential, you know, and use it to you know, sell a bunch of plastic shit that's going to be in a landfill or, you know, I guess create a money markets scheme or, you know, you could do all sorts of things with these skills. But I trust all of you who are watching are going to take these skills and use them in integrity to make the world a better place. So being a leader is being a good interrupter. Hi, Christina. A good leader interrupts the habitual day-to-day -day life, right? Like people are just kind of living life as is and a good leader interrupts that and says, hey, take this leap with me, take this journey with me. There's something more, hi Karen, there's something more that's out there um, and, it, and, and, and you make it enticing, you make it exciting, you make it tempting enough for someone to step outside their comfort zone and follow you. Um, and you have to be safe enough and grounded enough and confident enough. Um, yeah. So that's something I get really excited about. Enrollment conversations are not a bad thing, so step into to getting excited about that skill and I trust you that you're going to use it for good. So number four is get on a mission. This one I love too. You can tell I'm so excited about today. These are like all some of my favorite things. Um, oh, Kara says I try this all the time at work asking people to try something new. I love that Kara. I love that about you. I love the people who do that, who are like, come, come, come try this thing. And it's hard because it's not always well received, is it? <laughs> it's hard to be a leader. It's lonely to be a leader. Um, 
a little bit of a tangent. I remember when I worked on campus, we would have these meetings where people would say, hey, yeah, we're going to open up. We're going to, you know, really get close. We're, we're going to really explore our personal stuff. And um, it always felt like, like we're all going skinny dipping, you know, like, hey, we're all going to go skinny dipping. And I'd always be the first one to take off my clothes and then nobody else would take off their clothes. I'm, this is metaphorically speaking here. We didn't take off our clothes at UC Davis. <laughs> um, and then nobody else would take off their clothes. I'd be like, what? I thought we were going to do this thing, you guys. Um, so I'm just speaking to you, Kara. I know it's hard when you get, you get a lot of no's. <laughs> but when you get those few yeses, oh my God. So, um, yes, Kara says yes, exactly. Um, okay, back to number four, get on a mission. Okay, I love this one. So get on a mission involves getting really good at, boundaries right so you have to get really clear about what your yes is like what are you up to what's the movement that you're trying to lead what is the thing you want to do what is the thing that you're most passionate about and I've got a lot of different activities around this you know figuring out what your values are who are the people and the causes that are most important to you just get really clear on what your yeses are because that's going to help you say no because there's going to be a lot of stuff you need to say no to as a leader because you're going to have to really be super conscientious about how you spend your time. Um, yeah, basically it's going to be leadership and the things that nourish you and, you know, refill your tank. Um, and, and you got to kind of cut out all the rest. There's this great book I love um, called The Power of a Positive No. Um, I can't remember his name, but he also wrote getting to yes, which is another great book on negotiating, but the power of a positive no is basically, it can be so hard to say no to something because you know the cost to other people when you say no. Um, and in that moment, there can be this sort of like, well, I have the time to do this. I could do this. You know, why not? But the power of a positive no is looking at the opportunity cost, right? Like if you say yes to this thing that you're kind of like, oh yeah, I'm going to go to this baby shower of this person at work or, you know, just this thing that you're kind of like, yeah, I could kind of do it, but I'm not really dedicated to this person or it's not, you know, I don't know, it's just going to be this, uh, you know, you know, one of those baby showers where you, no offense, but you know, <laughs> where it's like you just open presents and like have a bunch of small talk or anyways, that's an example for me, obviously, of something. Um, where if you say yes to that, what are you saying no to in yourself? What, what's the opportunity cost? Oh, Terrence says, William, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Uri? Uri? William Uri? Um, he wrote The Power of a Positive No and Getting to Yes. Awesome books. Um, yeah, so really looking at the opportunity cost. So getting really good at boundaries. You're going to have to be super good at boundaries. Um, also, because as you step more into leadership, people are going to want more and more from you. So you have to get really choosy about what's the best use of, of your time. You know, what's the like biggest bang for your buck time-wise um, in terms of the change that you can make um, and then how to refill yourself so you can keep doing it. So I'm moving on to point five, which is related, which is, this is what, this is the, the yes, <laughs> um, you know, in addition to the leadership you're, you're going to have to have a huge yes to taking immaculate care of yourself. And people always said this, and I didn't like fully get it until this year, um, that you need to, you're, if you're stepping into leadership, you're going to be constantly stretching your comfort zone, constantly. Um, well, not constantly, you know, you climb a mountain, you, you eat some trail mix, look out at the view, and then climb another mountain. <laughs> but, so you need to take care of your nervous system. Um, you know, so stuff like, like for me getting pedicures, I always kind of thought that was this, you know, just, you know, I'm like, I could feed a family in India for a week, the amount I spent on a pedicure. But just recognizing the value for me. I have a really hard time meditating. So that's my meditation of just like sitting there and receiving touch and just clearing out, just clearing out all the to-do list, all the la 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 la. Um, so whatever, whatever that is for you, um, that, 
that just helps you clear that, you know, whether it's hiking or reading poetry or drinking wine with friends or sitting in the hot tub or, um, you know, maybe smoking a little pot and painting. I know pot's really bad for a lot of people and I know it's really great for others. So, you know, whatever it is that, that refuels you, um, Another reason is you just need to stay grounded, really grounded in who you are and what your truth is because um, as you step into leadership, people are going to project a lot of stuff on you and that's good. I mean, that's that's a lot of the times how they heal it, right? You step into authority and then all the shit that people have on authority because everybody, who doesn't have shit on authority, you know? <laughs> you know, who didn't have some trauma with a, a teacher or, or a parent at some point, you know, who doesn't have something to heal around that, right? So they're going to project that onto you and you get to provide an opportunity for healing for them if you can not get triggered. And every once in a while you're going to get triggered, you know, so that's when you have your people who help you look at that. Um, but, you know, they're going to, and they're going to project the good stuff on you too. I mean, how many leaders right now are really looking at um, men and sexuality with the Me Too movement, you know, how many have fallen prey to, you know, just like it feels really good when project people are projecting all this like amazing good shit on you. And that stuff is just as not true as the negative stuff. <laughs> so you have to be super grounded. My mom had this great quote on, on her office wall growing up and I'd always read it and think about it. It said, the wise one is not shaken by praise or blame. So trying to stay grounded through all that stuff, you're going to need um, your resources. Um, also great to have friends from before you started to become a leader who just don't care that you're a big mucky muck or if you fall off the pedestal, they just, they just know you inside and out. Um, and it's also really important to have a tribe of people who are also leaders. Um, because people who aren't doing it are just not going to get it. And you're going to get a lot of critique and criticism. And it's, most of it's going to be super well-intentioned. You know, people are going to, they're going to put all their, your family members or friends are going to put their stuff around, like, whatever they have around stepping into visibility and bigness. Like, oh God, I'm really worried about the thing that you said in your blog because... People might take it the wrong way or, you know, put your clothes back on kind of thing. Um, so you're really going to need people who who are doing it right alongside with you. Who are just like, oh yeah, that happened to me last week. Um, and who just get how hard it is. You know, because a lot of like the criticism too is so well-intentioned. Like, hey, I want to help you do a better job. And it's, and it's like, dude, you have no idea how hard it is. <laughs> um... So you just need those people who, who know how hard it is and who can just say, yeah, me too. Um, and you're going to need your own mentor or guide. Hey, Patrick. <laughs> you're going to need your own mentor or guide who, someone who's beyond you, who's just like up on the mountain, like watching you down in the forest. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, take a right over there, or left over there. Or, you know, we're just like, oh, yeah, there's a trail right through here. Like, it's no big deal. It's no big deal. Like I walk that trail all the time, um, and can just just hold that for you. Of like, yeah, you're totally totally on your way. It's no big deal. Um, I've got you. And then you can look at your mentor and be like, okay, well if they're doing that, then I can do this. You know, if they can climb that mountain. Well, you know, I could probably climb this hill. Um, and you need space to tap into your creativity and your inspiration um, because to be a good leader you're leading from inspiration so you need a place to get your ideas you need you need to be feeling inspired some of the time so you're really gonna need to carve out time and space and know what it is that inspires you for me it's it's being in the wilderness and having downtime um, magic time so why don't, that would be another good thing to share. Why don't you guys write um, what, 
list a couple of the things that just ground you or inspire you or nourish you. List a couple of the things that like are your are your nourishing yeses. Um, it's so important to know what those things are and to put them in your schedule. Like if you don't put them in your schedule, they're not. Don't have them be the you know if there's room kind of things. Just just get them in there. So I'd love to hear from a few of you about what those things are. So I'll repeat back um, the, the strategy. So number one, let it be both personal and spiritual. So I believe you're being called and it's okay that there's, you know, a selfish, personal, maybe somewhat broken reason that's pulling you into leadership. Be aware of it and keep tabs on it. Um, number two is walk the walk and talk the talk. So that's figuring out, you know, what's the Kool-Aid that you want people to drink? I know it's just such a bad example, but it doesn't have to be creepy, right? Like you, you get to lead a movement. What do you want to lead and how do you want to live your life in a way that inspires people and entices them into a more expanded, more powerful way of being in the world? Number three is get really good at enrollment conversations. And again, those, are, those can be anything. Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech is an enrollment conversation. Get really good at inspiring and enticing people to do the hard thing to step outside their comfort zones um, and do so with integrity because um, those are powerful skills. Number four, get on a mission. Get really clear on what your yeses are so that you can say no to anything that isn't about your mission and isn't about nourishing yourself. And number five is take immaculate care of yourself so that you can stay grounded, so that you can reset your nervous system, so that you can have your tribe of support and regularly tap into your creativity and your muse. So I'm going to move towards wrapping up. Um, yeah, so just, I mean, just imagine for a moment, like, let me close your eyes and Think about all the leaders you love and think about the people in your life who you would most love to be leaders. Like, how do you want the world to be? It's possible to make a big difference towards manifesting that vision. It is possible that you could be a huge part of that. Even if it's little, it's big, right? Because all the little adds up to big. So, so let your life be meaningful. Look, look back on your life from your deathbed and what is it that you want people to be saying about the difference that you made? Um, if you're a healer, what, what, what is it that you want your clients to be saying about how you inspired them, how you enticed them into these big scary changes? Um, it's all worth it. It's worth it. I believe any of you who are watching this talk right now are feeling called. And so I'm asking you right now to please don't ignore that call. I don't know if that's grammatically correct. Please do not ignore the call. Please do your work to clear the stuff just little by little. You by no means have to be perfect to get started, you know. I think I'm pretty good at role modeling that all the time. <laughs> you know, you just get started and the confidence will come from there. And you'll just keep expanding and expanding little by little, poco a poco. Um, so please don't ignore the call. So my ask of you today, if you're watching, is to share this video. Um, you can share it with one to three friends who you would love to see step into leadership and just tell them a sentence or two about that like hey this is for you um, share it on your page your Facebook page um, 
uh, I'd like to spread the word. I trust that anyone who's watching um, has a good friend group of people who would make great leaders. So let's let let's like get this going. Let's get it moving faster. We need we need to step it up, man. <laughs> we need to step it up. Um, because. You know, the earth is stepping it up, you know. We've got eruptions, fires, mudslides. We've got crazy leadership right now. So please step it up. Please share the, share this. Um, and I look forward to seeing you next Monday. And either next Monday or the Monday after, I'm going to be starting a Facebook challenge where we'll be together all week long, um, diving deep into all this stuff. So stay tuned for the next Mojo Monday. And um, thanks for showing up here today. I love you. <sighs> Bye. Mm -hmm.